Alexa, turn off the living room AC. Okay. Today, we're going to be talking about my Smart RV project that I've been working on for the last year and have been hinting at. I'll discuss how far I've got, what I have planned to do, and a little bit of how I'm doing it. Okay, this is Home Assistant and is the brains of the operation. So one of the things you have to think about when you're building uh, home automation into an RV is internet access. And Home Assistant allows you to do the majority of your home automation without internet, which is perfect and it's free and customizable and uh, really allows you to implement a whole bunch of stuff and has a lot of support. So there's a lot of really smart people going out there and, and implementing all of these things and you're able to find tutorials on the internet on how to follow them, uh, which leads me to my next point. I am not an expert at all and I can't really be everyone's geek squad. So if you're interested in learning more about uh, making a smart RV, I recommend you join the Facebook group DIY Smart RV. I started it over a year ago and haven't really pushed it at all, but we have uh, almost 50 members now of people who are just interested in making a smart RV and there's a lot smarter people than me in there. So if we all join and start talking, uh, everyone can help each other, or at least point you in the right direction. So it'll be easier for me than doing it in the comments here. Along with Home Assistant, I use these Arduino boards. So I use this little Node MCU board. And these little boards are cheap. I think they're less than $5 and they allow me to control certain functions or take sensor readings. Uh, in my whole smart RV system, at first I tried to do all this like automation and fun stuff, uh, at least that I thought would be fun, like turning <laughs> off the lights at a certain time or whatever, but uh, that really, really lost the wife acceptance rating <laughs> when like the fireplace would turn on at 9 p.m. every night and then Sinatra would blare and it was like nice on like the one or two nights we wanted to wind down. But then the one night where we had friends over and suddenly all this stuff starts going crazy, <laughs> that uh, wife acceptance factor really dropped. So now what I'm trying to do is to uh, put sensors everywhere and monitor as much data as I can so then I can create alerts based off of certain things um, and then automate little things that uh, we know will work one way or another and won't get in the way of our or normal operation. So these little boards uh, and sensors, they go in those little 3D printed things. So this is a temperature and humidity sensor and then the Arduino board and I've printed it and I'll be adding a couple other sensors here, but this is that, that getaway case. Matches your shirt. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, so these are really cool. They're really small and they can go all over the place with very, very small power usage. All right, so let me show off some more of the cool stuff that I've done so far and that is working. Um, <laughs> and so one of those is we ran into an issue when we put our dual Victron setup where it powers every outlet all the time, where when we unplug from the power outside, our fridge used to be able to detect the power loss and switch over automatically to propane so that we would drive down the road, we'd be using propane, we'd plug back in, it would automatically switch back to power, which we loved. But now when we unplug the power, it would never detect power loss because it would just start pulling power from our batteries and a couple of times we've ended up trying to go boondocking and our batteries at like 80% because we've been driving the whole day with the, the fridge running. <laughs> yes. And normally losing power and having our batteries kick in seamlessly has been amazing. Yeah. That has been the only downside. <laughs> yeah, for almost every other outlet. And, and it's our fault because we told them to wire everything. Normally that's not wired into your inverters. So I then had to take the next step and figure out how to automate uh, detecting the power 
which, uh, spoiler alert, Victron, which is one of my favorite RV power companies, uh, is very open and friendly to smart RV or friendly to people looking into their like software and they allow you to export all of the data from their dashboards. So I'm able to export all of my power data into Home Assistant, which means I can both monitor it in one single location and then uh, also set up alerting based on things that I want and then also trigger automations based on things that I want. So now I'm able to detect when the power cord is unplugged and it will turn off the outlet. I have a, a special outlet that I plugged in that allows me to control it remotely as well. And so when we unplug from power, it'll automatically turn off the fridge power like it was supposed to. <laughs> All right. So let's check okay. it out. I'll go look at the fridge. So Jason's just gonna flip a switch on here. Oh goodness, there we go. Right Saying here. that we lost power. Okay, so this is our fridge panel. Um, just in case you didn't know this, this little symbol right here, where it has the power and the little propane symbol right next to each other, when you have it on that setting, it basically just means it's gonna detect which one it has. So if it loses power, it switches over to propane. If you run out of propane, it will switch over to power if you have it, obviously. So this is a great resource because just in case you know, you are out for the day and you lose power, you, your fridge will automatically switch to propane instead of just turning off and you losing all your food. So you can manually tell it if you want it to have, obviously, electrical always, propane always, or whichever one you have access to. So right now, because we're hooked up to 50 amp, it's saying that our power source is the best option. Okay, so now you can flip the switch. <laughs> All right, and did you see that? It just switched over to propane. So all Jason did with that was tell it that our power source turned off. <laughs> yeah, and so that is one of those, like, it's not very fancy, but it solved a problem that I created with our special <laughs> setup. Um, but you can take that same outlet and apply it to anything. Um, if you have a coffee maker or something else that you want to turn on automatically, Home Assistant allows you to control anything that has power. The other thing it allows you to do is monitor power usage. So you can see and track how much power a certain appliance uses um, or something like a heater. Like you can have a heater running for a um, that plugs into the wall running for a certain amount of time and it'll turn it off. Some of the other cool things that I've done uh, that we like and use is actually we control our RV lock um, remotely. So by the way, Home Assistant has an app on the iPhone and I think Android as well that allows you to control all of your devices. It's built in. So, so one of the things that we really like is to be able to lay in bed <laughs> and lock our front door sometimes. Of course. Damn it. <laughs> yeah. Great it, when it does work. <laughs> it's great when it does work. Uh, we also, we don't have the front door unlock enabled because it doesn't work 100% of the time and that is not something I want to have <laughs> uh, sort of working in the RV. Uh, but Still, all right. <laughs> Is the fireplace working? <laughs> so uh, another good thing that I've automated was turning on and off the fireplace. Right. So yeah, let's test that out. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Carmen is unimpressed. Cool. Yeah, so that was like originally I tried to set up this really cool automation where it would turn on the fireplace and start playing music and we'd wind down for the night and but when you're in the middle of a TV show. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really doesn't really do it for you. Some other things that I've automated and that I'm trying to automate in more locations is temperature and humidity monitoring. I talked about what I wanted to do in the bathroom with a temperature and humidity uh, monitor was to in turn, yesterday's vlog. In yesterday's <laughs> vlog. So if you haven't seen that, uh, turn automatically the, the max fare on to start venting when the humidity gets high in there in case uh, someone forgets to open the fan. 
Um, While taking a shower? Well, yeah, exactly. I don't know who would do that. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, some other things, uh, I guess we can go outside to check them out. Okay. <laughs> People have asked what beer I'm drinking right now. It's Golden Road, uh, Wolf Pup Session IPA. I don't drink a lot of IPAs, but for some reason, this Wolf Pup, it's not too bitter. And Golden Road is a Los Angeles brewery, so it, you know. Speaks to your soul. Yeah, exactly. It goes down easy. It goes down <laughs> too easy. Yeah. Uh, so, so out here is one of the first things that I've done, and it's not the cleanest uh, yet. I don't have it in any cases, but I have my temperature and humidity sensor in this front bay because when these two Victrons are charging at the same time, uh, when we get to a 50 amp location. After boondocking. After boondocking and they're both going. And if it's a hot day, this whole temperature compartment gets really hot. Um, so of course it always depends on the temperature outside and a couple other factors, but I like to, to monitor it. And the first time we found out it was just because our stairs, which are right up here, were warm. <laughs> and we're like, oh my God, why are these so warm? And we came down here and it was like 110 degrees. So uh, so I put this temperature and, and humidity sensor in here and now it just monitors the temperature fluctuations in this compartment, uh, which is, and it alerts us if it gets too low because these are also where my Battleborn batteries are. Too high. And if it gets too <laughs> oh. high in case uh, these things are both running and this compartment gets over 100 degrees, it'll send me an alert so I, I know to, to come open that. I didn't even know you had it for too low, considering it rarely it's happens. never gone off. Yeah, it, it almost <laughs> never happens because even when we're in the Grand Canyon in this video and our Oops. batteries pretty much <laughs> died and it was just, yeah. anyway, this temperature compartment because of these inverters kept our, our batteries at like, I don't know, 30 to 40 degrees, mm -hmm. and inside was 17. So, <laughs> it was miserable. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. So anyways, the other thing that's also uh, in process for, for me outside is this little thing. <laughs> that and, is also... Yeah, it's <laughs> temporary. To be, yeah. <laughs> uh, and here's the, the inside wires, but it is a door sensor. So mm. that way I can tell when this door is open and closed because we have expensive stuff in here. And so it's just <laughs> extra little thing. Um, I wanna put them on all of the doors on the outside. And that's more because of, yeah, like I, we've said in previous vlogs, every once in a while we'll like leave a door open and we won't see it till the next day. And I just hate that feeling of like yeah. leaving a door open. All right, so let's go inside and we'll show you uh, some of that AC and heating automation that I've already done. We did this one for you. <laughs> she doesn't care. <laughs> so one of uh, the most requested and, and asked about and most wanted upgrade is automating your AC in your RV. People got so used to the Nest but unfortunately, it takes a decent amount of work to get a nest to work in the RV. Um, but if you join the DIY <laughs> Smart RV group and ask Matt Knight from oh, no. Adventurous Way. Don't send them all to him. <laughs> he has a nice write up on installing this, which allows you to control it remotely. He also uses Home Assistant and is my inspiration for some of this stuff. Uh, for how to actually do it because he has the background in that. I have all these ideas and then I, it's always Matt who has the actual way to implement it. Yes, I'll link his uh, blog article below too. Yeah, <laughs> and so um, so just like everything else, it's controlled here. We can turn on the AC remotely as long as we have uh, internet connectivity. Oh, of course it doesn't work because why would it work? <laughs> okay, what happened? <laughs> all right. <laughs> It was working. I messed up. Oh, okay. uh, so you can just turn it on remotely. So turning on the AC in here and then turning down the temperature. <laughs> you can not fat finger it. <laughs> there we go. Woo! Yeah. So uh, you can also set automatic modes. 
and set your temperature range that you want, like stick between whatever, 68 and 77. And so this is great, especially when we're out boondocking or when we're just away and leave Carmen in here, we can still control and monitor the temperature. We can monitor power outages and be alerted to them. We can make sure we turn on the AC or uh, something I did this last winter was I automated turning the heater on in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, so it would turn on about an hour before I woke up because we don't care about running it all night. We're usually in this little room and, and yeah, fine. Yeah, it gets warm up here. Yeah, but the kitchen is our gets, biggest yeah, room. Yeah, it's yeah. the biggest room. And so I like to, to turn on the heater. And so I would had automation turning that on every morning and then turning it off after a certain amount of time. And so that is really convenient when you can control it. And even just being able to monitor the temperature uh, remotely is, is super convenient as well. Um, and power outages. So once again, I'm all about monitoring. So things that I'm going to be installing so I can monitor are uh, hopefully get the data out of the sea level so I can get my tank monitoring, uh, propane tank monitoring. There's a couple of ways to do it. Uh, there's a new way that's going to be coming out soon that'll allow me to pull that data into Home Assistant. So I'm waiting for the propane sensors to come out for that. And I'm really excited about that. So no more running out of propane yeah. in the middle of the night. It'll <laughs> alert me. Um, so I've said it before, I'm really big on collecting this data and I don't necessarily care about most of it. I just <laughs> want to be able to set a start and end threshold and have it alert me when there's a problem. Um, I mean, we're in year 2020, right? So I want all of this uh, robots to tell me what's going on. I don't want to have to work for the robots. Uh, that's later. Yeah, that's later. <laughs> Once they become smart enough to work 100% of yes, the time. Yes, then you'll be working for the robots. <laughs> but uh, do you have any questions or anything that you would like me to talk more in depth about? Uh, let us know in the comments down below. I have a ton more things that I'm working on in terms of the Smart RV and it's always little by little. So I'm super excited about the future. I'm excited for all of you to get into Smart RV. <laughs> Hopefully a lot of you are smarter than I am and you're able to implement things and show me how to do it. So don't forget to join the DIY Smart RV group. Carmen's super excited. She yeah. loves all the upgrades we've done for her. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow <laughs> bye guys you bored the dog to death hey what are you doing what's that what's that like <laughs> oh my goodness oh my goodness turn off the ac you didn't say living room okay i f***ed it up because i talked Quantifier. okay so okay does not like Alexa. No, she doesn't. And this thing is... It doesn't want to focus. Uh, that's okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay, go ahead. It's really cool when it works. <laughs> it just worked like six times. <laughs> it's nice. Carmen. <laughs>